Greetings, YouTube. <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> uh, good one. All right. Uh, I got some stuff to pass on today, so I just thought I'd start out by um, telling you about a discovery that I made. Uh, Rose has been, this is our cow, cow Rose, and I just made her this really nice stanchion that she can stand in. And she really likes it. She gets to look at the wall, and there's not a lot of sensory there. So she relaxes. And she likes standing in her stanchion. She really does. I finished milking her right before breakfast, and then I forgot about her. <laughs> so she's been out here for an hour, but she's happy. She's happy to see me. There was a cat sitting right here, and they were conversing. But i got to take her out and let her go. So I thought what I would do is, while I was doing that... I would uh, make a quick video to you all and let you know what's going on. Um, one thing, her milk production went way, way down when I was gone. And, uh, I mean, it went from three gallons to a half a gallon. And uh, it was because my son that was taking care of the farm, he was not able to milk her early like I do. So he was having a milker later in the day. And with everything changed around, she just didn't like that. And I got back and she was only putting out a half a gallon of milk. But over the last couple of days, she's bouncing back. And she's back up to a gallon and a half this morning. And a lot happier. You know, a whole lot happier. So she wants to stop here and eat some raspberry bushes. Which is cool, because we're not getting any... Oh, you don't want them, huh? But what I learned there is that you have to... You have to keep a schedule and stay with it. And she's always been milked in the morning, so that's her happy time. And so that's what we have to do. She'll bounce back, and she'll get back up to two and a half gallons, I think. And she'll stay there for a while. That seems to be her, her norm... She's got all the grass she can eat, and I'm actually giving her some uh, some kelp. It comes from the ocean, you know. So the other thing is, November 2nd, 3rd, and 4th is our annual hog harvest. And it's a anyone can farm class that we do. And, uh, yeah, now I can hear better. I can hear myself. And we've been doing it for, I don't know, I'd have to check, but I think it's 10 years anyway. Um, and we start out with live hogs. All right, let's go. On It starts on a Friday afternoon. And uh, depending on how many people attend, I think there's six right now. Um, it's a half a pig per three people. So with six people, we would do one pig. If we had 12 people, it would be two pigs. And then sometimes, you know, we might even do a little extra if we have that kind of manpower. So we'll see. And uh, we shoot pigs uh, Friday right, you know, 2 o'clock-ish in the afternoon after we get everybody settled and know each other's names and stuff. Here, let me turn around here. My arm gets tired after a while. This is my filming arm. And then uh, we break overnight. you got to get lodging downtown, and there's plenty of it around here over in Cadillac, 20 minutes away. And then the next day we start at 9. Doesn't seem early, but people are pretty tired after that first day. And then we hit it hard Saturday. And we go through all the procedure of breaking the carcass down and then getting the carcass ready for, you know, storage. And uh, then on Sunday, i got to break her ice. Look at that. On Sunday, we're uh, putting that, that, uh, that pork on... Let me get her halter off. Okay, now I can talk. We're putting that, and there she goes. 
I'm going to go eat for the rest of the day. Okay, so then Sunday we're putting that pork on salt. We're getting it in sausage casings. We're preparing it to hang and all that good stuff for, you know, um, storage for the winter. You know, it's called charcuterie. That's the art of it. This is hog hog homestead harvest, so this is more utility-based for the person that wants to have a couple hogs on their homestead and know how to get them processed for the table. And it can be done, for sure. We've put a lot of people through this class, and, and there's been a lot of great results. People can do it. This is part of the Anyone Can Farm program, and um, you can do this. It can be done. You just have to know the steps and be able to perform those steps. And that's the idea of this class is we're starting out with live pigs, and then we end up with sausages. And plus, you get to take a bunch of the stuff home. Um, this is a, a process that can go in your toolbox, and you'll have it there forever once you know how to do this. And if you can butcher a pig, you can butcher a squirrel, right? If you can butcher a squirrel, you can butcher, you know, a gazelle, right? In case you wind up at the Serengeti sometime or in Botswana and you have to survive out there on the, on the prairie. I'm going a little deep, ain't I? It's Monday morning. I'm feeling good. Clear sky, and we are ready to hit it. Uh, I'm really looking forward to hog harvest. I would like to have a, a nice size group. Uh, the class is 350 bucks, and that is pretty cheap for the, uh, the process that you will learn intimately and be able to take home with you. So if you're interested in this, you can go to bakersgreenacres.com and look in the Anyone Can Farm column. And uh, if that doesn't work, just call the farmhouse and somebody will get back to you. It's The number is 231-825-0293. If it was me, I would call the farmhouse. Okay? Then you, then you know. And we take a deposit. And if you don't come, you don't get the deposit back. Because we, we got to fill these seats kind of judiciously. I don't like to have any more than 15 people, then it's, it's too close. I've got some new facility this year that I didn't have last year. So if we have inclement weather, we can be completely inside. And that's my new shop up there. We just set up tables and we can move everything in. What I like to do is I like to do it outside. On a day like today where it's cool and it's sunny, you can see really well. There's no flies. This would be the perfect day to do it. Uh, don't know what's going to come then in November. Who knows? Um, but if we have inclement weather, we can move in, which in years past, it's been kind of tough because people have been, you know, working in the rain. And But that's, you know, part of this. I mean, we are all, rather, all weather homesteaders. We have to be able to do this in any weather. All right. I think that's it. And the other thing is, is I would like people to, uh, if you could... Uh, never mind, never mind. Oh, got four puppies left. Four male puppies. And they're, I think they're eight or ten weeks now. They're ten weeks, so they're definitely, they got to be gone. Um, if you know somebody that wants a great Pyrenees puppy, um, they're great dogs. It's a commitment for sure. If you live in Manhattan in an apartment, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you are into homesteading and you ha keep livestock, it's a great animal. Um, they have a couple of downfalls, though. They're wanderers, so you have to have an in-ground fence. They have to wear a collar to keep them in. No doubt about that. If you're not willing to do that, this is not your dog. Um, they stay out all winter. They don't need to come in. I have one that comes in and one that stays out. Uh, so that's it. That's it. Uh, I'll be uh, I'll be around today. So remember, anyone can farm.